Okay, welcome uh, with the webinar of the Friesian Stadtbook. I'm Caroly Munsters. I have a PhD in equine exercise physiology. And the last years we have done studies on fitness of Friesian horses, horses exercise testing and uh, fatigue levels. And today we're going to talk about optimal training of the Friesian horse. First, uh, we're going to take you with, you with us to some basic principles of equine exercise physiology. Then we're going to talk more in depth about the research we did with the Friesian Stud Book in cooperation with our Faculty of Veterinary Sciences uh, of Utrecht University. And then we're going to translate that to practical training advice for all you guys with Friesian horses at home and how you can use this information to train your horse more optimally and prepare, prepare him for performance. The first general basic uh, training principle we're going to discuss is the law of overload. Maybe for some people of you it's already known, but it's a simplistic graph you see here. Uh, but this is actually what happens in the body when you are training. For a lot of people, and especially equestrian people, think that when you train your horse, each training you do, the horse gets fitter. Actually, that's not completely true. Because if we're going to look at this graph, you see this line here. This is your basic fitness level. The principle works also the same for humans, but if we stick to equines, so this is the fitness level we have here. But when you start training, so this is a training stimulus, actually your fitness level decreases. So what you see here, at this point you have a worse fitness, you feel more fatigued than before the start of the training. So actually what is needed to get better is not more training. No, you need an active recovery period. And this is this path here. This is a recovery period. And after the recovery, you get better. So here is the point of overload or overcompensation. You're better here than before the training. And what happens is that this only occurs after you have a training stimulus followed by a recovery period. And during this recovery period, your body is going to make adaptations. So the next time your horse is getting the same kind of training, he can endure the training better, is fitter, is stronger than before the training. What is also important in this graph is that when you don't do anything with the training, with that overcompensation point, this adaptation will decrease again and you go back to normal level. So if you really make it quite simple, if you just train once a week, for example, also with humans, but also if you only do a one intense training session a week with your horse, for example, on Monday, you're, on Monday you do an intense training session, this is Tuesday, this Wednesday, Thursday, then uh, you are at your best, you should maybe plan then your competition. But at least you're better than when you start your training on Monday, but if you don't train anything more, your fitness level is going down again to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and you start all over again. Of course, this is a very simplistic way of how it works, but what this graph shows is that your training is important, but mo maybe recovery period is even more important, and you should do your next training on the overcompensation period, at least your intense training sessions. Now you're probably wondering, okay, what can I do during these recovery periods? When we look at Frisian horses, and we will come to that later on, a recovery training is probably most of the time a low intensity training. And it will take one or two days before they are better, they, they are acclimated from the training impulse and they are at their overcompensation point. So what can you do in these recovery days? When you have a fit horse, it can be that it's just an hour of gymnastic work, low intensity dressage training. But if you have a young horse, Probably the recovery period means that the horse has an active rest period. And I always say active rest because we don't want a horse stable 24 hours because stable rest will decrease the fitness level of horses. So active rest means that he is, can be in a paddock, he can be in a walker, that he's outside, that he has some free movement. And the more free movement a horse can do, the better it helps to get fitter. And the other part you have to be aware of is that you, if you have a competition, where do you want to be at your competition? You want to be at this point. So what you never should do before a competition is one or two days before the competition train very intense. Because, for example, if you have a competition on Sunday and you start training very intense Friday or Saturday, here you are Sunday at your competition. And the horse is not able to perform well. 
So always, if you're coming towards a competition, do less and make sure that the horse, at, well, the body of the horse can recover well enough to perform nicely at a competition. So if you're going to talk about adaptation and getting your horse fitter or stronger, it's also about how intense is the training session. Because some riders are really afraid of getting horses injured. And what we see here, if you always train too light, so at a too low intensity, you get this graph. You can also see that there's almost no, no overcompensation. And if you don't have overcompensation, the body will not improve. The horse will not get stronger, it will not get fitter, and uh, that's also a problem. But don't think the opposite, then I'm going to train very intense, then you're getting this graph, you have a very intense training or maybe a very intense competition with your horse. You can see that the recovery period takes much more time, it's much longer, but also no overcompensation occurs. So it's really important that you have a nice training stimulus, that you train well enough, not too light, not too intense, you have your recovery period and then he's improving. Now you probably understand how do I, or you're already questioning, how do I know what is a good fitness or training stimulus for my horse. Now that's something we have figured out with the research and the studies we're going to show later on in this webinar, what is normal for a Frisian horse. Uh, but what you should remember is that uh, intense training sessions are alternated with recovery sessions. So if we know what's the right training stimulus, so we are in this graph, you need one or two days recovery, then you have the next intense training session, and again one or two days recovery. If you do that, you get this optimal training graph. So you get an intense training session, and depending on the level of the horse and his training level, we will show later on what is intense or what is a low intensity training. But this is the training session. Here is the recovery period, one, two days. And I would always recommend take rather two days recovery than one day. So when you are further down your training program, you can sometimes try out if one day is better than two days. But most of the times when you start, use two days. Then you have the next intense training session, again two days of recovery, next intense training sessions, two days of recovery, and you get what you see here, a very nice fitness improvement. This is what you want, because in the end you have to train less and you get more effective results. And you can imagine that if you have to do less kilometers on your horse, have to make less hours, but hours which you train are more effective, are better also for injury prevention. Because the more hours you train, which are less effective, so maybe you train too early, he isn't recovered with le uh, well, or you train too late because it's too, too much days ago that you did your intense training sessions. All those things will make sure that training is not that optimal and all those hours are a reason Less, uh, yeah, a reason and a cause for injuries. So really important, if you are training your horse and he's not improving well, and this is especially important for Frisian horses, and you cannot understand why he's not improving, I would advise take more recovery in your training sessions. Because from making, of pre uh, performing more and more training sessions, he's not getting better. Because if you are training, and you think, okay, my horse is not doing well today. So this is, for example, Monday. You have an intense training session. It maybe didn't went like you would have ha have it going. So the next day you think, okay, we're going to do it again. You have to work very hard because yesterday it didn't work out. You're actually still in the recovery phase. So he's not prepared well enough for an intense training session. And you are thinking, I'm making him better. But actually what you're doing is making him worse because he's decreasing again. And then Wednesday, he's still not feeling well enough. Uh, pro probably the performance is going down. So what you're going to do is add another intense training session because it's not working. And actually, if you keep on doing this, is what's happening is that the horse is getting overtrained because the balance between training sessions and recovery is off. So it's really important that a body, and a ho uh, especially the whole horse, can only improve when they have good training sessions followed by good recovery sessions so they get better. And only if they have good recovery sessions, recovery training sessions, then is the point where they have uh, improved fitness. Yeah, so it's all about the combination between training and active rest. 
So don't train more. So if you're thinking, okay, my horse is not performing well, don't try to train more, but analyze your training sessions, evaluate what is intense and what is not intense, and see how you can optimize your training program. Keeping in mind that you try to stick to one day intense training sessions, two days recovery, low intensity sessions, depending on the level of the horse. It's an off day or it's a low gymnastic session, and then again an intense training session. So now we go more to the studies we, done, we have done with the Frisian horses. Actually, we have performed in the last 10 years uh, three large uh, research studies on Frisian horses. The first study we did was with um, the mare testing, the descendant mare testing. It was in 2010-2011. All the mares have, uh, are doing a performance test for their um, dressage abilities and their carriage driving abilities. We tested 66 mares. Then we did the central examination of the stallions in 2020, and again the central examination of the stallions in 2021. I'm going to talk you through all those studies we did, we did, and you will see that the whole principle of overcompensation in training and recovery is very essential in how we can improve the fitness of a horse. So... <laughs> What did we do uh, with the mare testing? The mare testing was done in two years' time. We tested in total 66 Frisian horses. They were all three and four years old. Most of them were three years old and only a few four years old horses. And because it was a, um, uh, there were descendants of stallions, there were only six different stallions uh, as father animals. So that was quite interesting on a genetic level. The testing they are doing, the performance test, lasted seven weeks. And in these weeks, we performed two fitness tests. We did it in the second week and in week six. We did it in the second week because the first week, the horses have to be um, acclimatized a little bit at the accommodation. They have to be get used to the riders. So we don't, didn't want to disturb that part. So we only tested in the second week. And then on the, uh, for the same reason, we tested in week six, because in week seven, they got the judges, uh, the scores, uh, and we didn't want to intervene with that one. What was the fitness test? It's quite a basic fitness test. It consisted of two minutes of walk, walking on the left uh, rein, walking on the right rein for two minutes, then again for two minutes trot on the left and on the right rein, and then two minutes of canter on the left and the right rein. So why did we use this exercise test? This was an exercise test we used in uh, earlier research studies with sport horses, basic sport horses, but also in riding school horses, which is a very low level exercise test. And at the beginning, when we started with this research, we didn't thought that this was already the exercise test for Frisian horses, but this was the warm up for the exercise test, which is normally the warm up. But what the data showed is that most of these horses uh, responded already quite uh, well on this exercise test and that this exercise test already uh, made sure that we got an increase in fatigue levels, etc. So that made that this was the final exercise test to use in this study. So when we go going to get to the results, there are of course a lot of results coming from this study, more than only the fitness part. But in this webinar, I'm only going to show you what we have done in the, with the fitness testing. And what we saw is that 70% of all the horses which did these exercise tests became fatigued during these tests. And that's quite remarkable because we have done what I already said, this same exercise test, performing with basic sport horses, with riding school horses, but we also performed this exercise test with uh, three-year-old uh, warm blood stallions. And none of these horses showed any level of fatigue. So none accumulation of lactate, all low intensity. It was just a low intensity exercise. So at first we were quite surprised that they had such a high heart rate and such a high lactate levels. Because we measured, of course, more than only heart rate, we also measured lactate levels and recovery times and also temperature. 
but uh, it was quite surprising that most of the horses, 70%, already became fatigued after four minutes of trot, but the most horses became fatigued after two minutes of basic canter. And fatigued means here that their lactate levels became higher than their anaerobic threshold, uh, which indicates a level of fatigue. And what we found out from the riders and the training, what they said is most of the time, normal training sessions are more intense than this exercise test, because it was quite, um, also remarkable that most riders said, okay, the horse didn't felt fatigue. The lactate showed that they were fatigued, the heart rate showed that they were very high, that a high, they had a high level of heart rate, uh, and the recovery values were quite uh, worse. But uh, actually the horses didn't show a lot of fatigue. The ears were just pricked forward, they're looking forward to go, and the riders also said, okay, I don't feel the fatigue, he feels quite fine. And I think that makes it even more difficult with Frisian horses compared to warm blood sport horses. Because if we have those heart rate and lactate values in warm blood sport horses, you see it more earlier on the horse, at the horse, that he is fatiguing. If we have heart rates of 180, 190 and lactates going towards 10, most horses you can see some level of fatigue occurring. And in Frisian horses, most of the horses didn't show that, not on the outside. But actually on the inside, when we measure those physiological parameters, it showed that they were fatigued. And um, that's an important thing to know already as a rider or as a trainer from Frisian horses, because don't rely on what you see is what you get with the Frisian horse. Sometimes they really can fool you that you think he's quite fit and he's right energetic, but actually when you start measuring him with a heart rate monitor or with lactate levels, you will see that he's quite fatigued. Uh, so always make sure that you double check before you interpret it as a fit horse. Another thing that we saw in this, um, in this exercise test, we compared it with the judge scores, scores a week later, and it was quite interesting that the judges scored horses which had lower levels of fatigue with a higher dressage score. So actually, some kind of fatigue level was also judged by the, by the judges, because when horses got fatigued, they got lower judges scores. If you want to know more about this research, it's already uh, published a few years ago in 2013, so it's quite some time ago. But in the veterinary journal you can find all the details and all uh, the principles about the study. So th the first advice we could give, based on this study from 10 years ago, is if you want to know, and especially young Frisian horses, how fit he is, start monitoring your horse. Just use a heart rate monitor for once or twice, and you know, is he able to do walk, trot, and canter without fatiguing? And uh, the character of the horse makes it even more difficult to assess whether or not a training is intense or a low intensity training for a Frisian horse. And based on that and on what we saw with the riders, and we have tested more Frisians in the last years, also Frisians uh, trained up to sub -tap top level or high level uh, dressage, we see that sometimes riders think that a horse is fit, but he isn't fit, um, indicating that a lot of Frisians uh, are getting more training that they sh than they should have and that they're not getting the right recovery periods and a lot of Frisians can be overtrained due to this fact. And that also has to do that they're physiologically and biomechanically they are differently, that trot and canter take more effort to trot and canter than a warm blood sport horse. But adding that up with a character which is really willing to work and really motivated can make a combination that a lot of Frisians are overtrained or can be overtrained because riders and trainers do not notice the signals and think they are fit and can do the work quite nice, well they can't. So be aware of that, maybe your horse isn't in that category, but from practical evidence we see that a lot of horses are still struggling, in, struggling with basic work like walk, trot and canter. So. Of course, that raises the question about how is it with the stallions? Because we did the mare testing, we come to the questions, how is it with the central examination? And I sure made an abbreviation of CE here, so 
each time you see CE, it's central examination of the stallions. And we performed the same exercise test. Uh, in last year, in 2020, there were six, 16 horses, 16 stallions enrolled in the central examination. The duration is normally 70 days, but uh, last year it was 77 days. It was postponed with, uh, uh, with one week extra. Uh, the first six weeks, they were trained under the saddle. They got dressage training. And the last four weeks, they get more... Oh, I see here, tension training. Sorry, that is more carriage driving training. And uh, we performed three fitness tests. The same fitness test I explained uh, earlier. And we did it at the beginning. So the second day, horses were enrolled in the central examination. We did it before the saddle exam, so in week five. And we did it just before the end, it, in the 10th week, before the uh, final examination of the stallions. Adding up with that, we used uh, uh, extra equipment, so we could monitor each workout. Each training session of each stallion was monitored with heart rate monitors and accelerometers. And an accelerometer is an IMU, a device which, which can track the minutes a horse is walking, trotting, cantering, and making transitions, standing still. So we knew exactly what the horse was doing during his training session, how many minutes he trotted, how many minutes he cantered, and at which intensity. We calculated all those times and we calculated also the total training time per week, the total training time per day, and we compared that throughout the central examination. So Actually, what we did, we tried to uh, quantify the training load of horses. So what is the load of the horses during training? And you can separate them in external loads, like the duration of a training session or the duration at a specific gate, or the frequency of transitions, or the kilometers a horse uh, travels, or the speed. And we also uh, evaluated the internal load of a horse, and that's a little bit, okay, how does the horse cope with this kind of external load? So if he has to work for several minutes at canter, what is his, the intensity? And that's something you can measure with heart rate and lactate concentration. So what did we see? Um, I think the main result is that during the whole central examination in 2022, we saw a negative training effect on the stallions. So per exercise test we performed on the horses, the horses did each time the same exercise test, completely the same time of minutes, etc. but they got more fatigued. And that more fatigued was shown in higher heart rates for the same effort they performed, higher lactate levels, so worse recovery values. So what we saw is that at the first week horses came into the central examination, uh, the exercise test took them less effort than at the end. So I'm going to show you here in the graph, this is the first exercise test, and here you can see the lactate concentrations, and uh, this is the gate, so this is the the canter one, canter two, and this is his recovery value after 10 minutes of walk. And you can see in the second exercise test, so after the dressage training, we can see, okay, the first canter is okay, but the second canter horse is getting more fatigued. And the last exercise test, of course, from the horses which completed the whole central examination, you can see that they're getting even for the same work they performed. Lactate levels go, went up and also recovery values went up, meaning they decreased, so they got more fatigued. And what this indicates is when horses are more fatiguing, when performing the same kind of exercise, performing the same kind of effort, this indicates overtraining. So we were, of course, curious what causes this kind of overtraining. We looked more in depth into the external and internal load of training sessions and the minutes they spent in walk, trot and canter. And the first thing we noticed is that when we looked at uh, when horses, stallions were enrolled in the central examination, we also took out questionnaires with the, the breeders of those stallions and we knew what kind of fitness horses had before they were enrolled of most horses. And we also uh, questioned what type and how many times in duration they were trained at home. And most of the stallions are trained three times a week at home, under the saddle, 
Uh, well, during the central examination, horses were trained for five times a week, most of the time up to 20, 30 minutes per training session. So that's already a quite a sharp increase in workload. And actually what's happening is that uh, they perform quite some canter training and trot training each day for five days a week. And after the dressage training session, we saw that actually the duration was a little bit shorter. They, of course, didn't canter anymore when they did carriage, carriage driving training. But what we saw is that uh, the intensity was higher and that's because of the carriage driving. So actually the second part of the central examination was more intense for the horses, higher heart rates than the first part of the central examination, which probably is related to the increasing fatigue levels of these horses. So what did we do when we presented this last year to the board of the Friesian Stadtbook? They said, okay, we want advice. How can we approve the training program of a Friesian st uh, Stadtbook stallions? And uh, I think that's already a very nice step as a Stadtbook to be so open and so honest about training programs and, and want to improve because now you know and now you can start improving. So we did a follow-up this year with the central examination of the stallions. And what did we adjust? We decreased the amount of training sessions per week. It was maximum three times a week with an exception of four, but focusing on the three times per week maximum that horses were trained, including lunging sessions, because if a horse is lunged, most of the times it's sometimes more intense, especially with young stallions, because they canter more, it's a small circle. Um, so that's also physically replaces a training session. There should be more alternation between training and recovery days. So the rules we applied, which I explained in the first sheets about overcompensation, was applied here also in the training program, meaning that they did one day of training and an intense training session seen on heart rate and lactate values was a training session containing walk, trot and a bit of canter. Canter up till two minutes, twice one minute, or maybe three or four minutes canter max. That's already making an intense training session for a Frisian horse. And then they got a recovery day, and the recovery day was active rest for these young horses. Uh, also, when they are trained three, max four times a week, uh, from those three to four times a week, they weren't cantering all training sessions. So they were only allowed to canter twice, two training sessions a week because the canter is really intense for those horses. So you get also more l light training sessions where horses are trained but doesn't uh, increase that much in, in intensity. So the light training sessions without canter and more intense work with canter. And that alternated again with one, two days recovery also in the weekends well before they trained five days a week and in the weekends they were off. So now it's more going to the seven days a week with alternating recovery days and light training sessions and some more intense training sessions. Uh, adding by, uh, with that is that the distribution about carriage driving was also better distributed throughout the central examination, meaning that uh, they start already earlier with the carriage driving work, so not only focusing that on the last part, in the last weeks. Um, and practically it also meant that with after the dressage uh, saddle exam, half the central examination, they only did carriage driving training. So they didn't do any dressage training anymore, which they were used to do normally, but they could only train three times a week. They were only allowed to train three times a week. So there were only three times carriage driving training uh, for that. Also an important note is that what we want to take with me to the breeders is don't start training more before the central examination. So you think, okay, I can make my horse fitter, my stallion fitter, so he can cope better with the central examination. Stick to the three times a week, about 20 minutes per training session with a few minutes max at canter uh, and not even each time you train. Uh, because of the the age of the horses, when they're three years old, they're not able to do much more than a three times a week. So don't think adding more training before they go to the central examination is going to make it better. It's probably going to make it worse because then you get an overtrained horse already enrolled in the central examination. So please 
keep it uh, at a low amount of training, but enough training with good recovery periods and start on time so they have a few months to prepare for this. So what did we saw? And it's quite recently we finished this um, central examination, of course. It's only a month ago. So we didn't, don't have all the, the graphs yet. But was the first remarkable result was is that we didn't saw an increase in fatigue levels. We saw that stallions, each exercise test they performed, values got lower instead of higher what we saw a year ago. So that shows that stallions are more likely to show an increase in fitness right now. So horses are better at the end of the central examination than compared to last year where they got worse and became more fatigued throughout the central examination. Horses now became fitter and could deal better with the same kind of effort, getting lower heart rates, lower lactate levels. And that's something that you want. Another part, what we already noticed is from the riders and the trainers, is that uh, what they said is that now the stallions feel in the final weeks the same and same fitness as in the first weeks, which showed them also, yeah, now I think about it. Uh, normally they need more rest days. We, we want to ask if he could have a day off because he feels a little bit fatigued. Although the freezing don't show it that much on the outside. They really notice the difference that the horses got more recovery periods and uh, felt fitter, felt fresher at the end, still as fresh as in the first weeks. And that's also shown in the values we measured. Another a note, I think also an important note to the judge part of, of course, the central examination is, of course, the horses have performed less dressage training or carriage driving training than they normally have. So that should be taken into account when judging those horses in the assessment. And of course, this is not something I could do by myself. This is the whole team of my PhD student, Esther, who has done a very big part of this, or other students who helped with this from Utrecht University. And we also, uh, with the, the help of all the riders, which performed all the daily, wor daily workload, monitoring and of course from the training without them we could never go to this result so a very big thanks to all of them so in the end you want to know what does this mean for the training of my frisian horse how can i optimize my training session i think first things you need to evaluate with your horse is to figure out what is intense for my horse so what we have seen measuring a lot of young Frisian horses is I think we can assume that for most young three, four year old, because we didn't saw a difference with four or three year old horses, uh, that more, most three or four year old mares or stallion are having difficulties coping with normal walk, trot and canter. And walk is okay, but trot and canter take more effort than that you maybe expect. So keep it short, because if they're already trotting for two minutes, that's okay. Four minutes, heart rate is going to increase. And two minutes of canter is already quite an intense training session for most young Frisian horses. But okay, we looked further, of course. We also measured a lot of uh, higher level dressage uh, Frisian horses. And we still saw that some horses were fit, but there were quite some horses performing at quite a high level of dressage and still are fatiguing from basic canter, basic trot work, uh, which can be improved because if you improve the basic fitness, they can perform the exercises and especially the high level dressage exercises more easily. So of course there are individual differences between horses. So take into account that because we see also that some horses are naturally more fit than other horses. It has to do with their anatomy, has to do with the biomechanics, physiology, but um, there are some individual differences. But overall young Frisian horses, I would suggest to take the training program we showed here earlier on in the, in the, in the webinar. And if you have older Frisian horse, measure your horse because if you don't measure with a heart rate monitor i think it's really difficult with frisian horses to discover what is an intense training session or not and to give you some guidelines a low intensity training session heart rate should 
stay below 120 beats per minute at trot, but also at canter. And we see that there are a lot of Frisian horses cantering maybe at 160, 117 beats per minute, only for a, maybe one minute. So that making, makes it already a moderate or an intense training session. That's no problem. If you keep it short, and short is just one or two minute bouts of training at canter at that moment, and uh, don't canter each day, for example, if your horse has trouble cantering. So really, I think even more with warm blood sport horses, with Frisian horses, it is important to monitor. And at least I think the heart rate monitors are quite commercially available, quite easy to interpret right now. So if you're in doubt, check how it is with your horse, and so you can optimize your training program. If you know he can do the basic walk, trot, canter level, you can go up a step and you can see if an intense dressage training or other session is more putting in more effort for him. If already the basic work is intense, then you know that recovery training is only walk, trot, or an active rest day. So important is a lot of people uh, are training warm blood sport horses and Frisian horses all together or mixing them a little bit. I really believe that a Frisian horse cannot be trained at the same training programs as warm blood sport horses. They are differently. They're not, they're not, uh, I think they, a lot of Frisian horses can reach a higher level of performance if they're not getting overtrained and trained better. So if they get a better training program, I think a lot of Frisians, in the end, get the same kind of fitness levels and can do all those dressage trainings quite easily. But at the moment, and it starts already with young horses, they have more difficulties with, uh, with just trot and canter. And that doesn't make it a problem. You only have to deal with it in your training program and really remind yourself that you keep everything short. So short intervals of one, two minutes of trot, one, two minutes of canter, and then have a recovery period at walk. And in the end, you can repeat those things that you do two times an interval of two minutes. In the end, you can, when you have a higher level horse, they can maybe do four intervals of one minute at canter or even six intervals, but always short bouts. Don't go trotting for 10 minutes with a young Frisian horse, but also with Frisian horses which are at higher age or perform more work. First check with a heart rate monitor if he could trot at the low heart rate, so below 120 beats per minute, if he can, you can maybe trot for 10 minutes, then monitor at canter. If it's a low level, then it's a low intensity and you can do it longer. But if the heart rate is higher, you have to keep it short. B it, because if you don't, the risk of overtraining and injuries is very high. When you have the fact that your horse has an intense training session, make sure he can recover well. So that means that the one or two days after an intense training session, you should keep the intensity low. So that can be a day off, it can be only walk and trot, uh, or very low gymnastic work or groundwork with dressage. Prevent the fact that you don't start training more. More training is not always better, as we have shown in the first slide, and always provide active recovery days or active rest days, so meaning going outside and uh, make sure he has a lot of free movement. The last thing I want to add is that we have also a lot of Frisian horses due to the nice character are used uh, for amateur riders, so not really maybe competition horses. But still, if you want to do your outdoor training sessions, you're going to the woods for one or two hours on a Sunday, that is fine. But you have to prepare your horse very well to do that kind of job. Because you can imagine seeing these results that just going to the woods, most of the people trot and canter more. They canter at higher speeds than normally in a dressage arena. And that means probably that a lot of Frisians, when they have doing outdoor riding and they do a lot of trot and a lot of canter, that they have, they are working at a high intensity. So it's probably higher than only dressage work. So it can be fine, but you have to make your horse fit for that kind of job. So that means also a lot of training 
and a lot of training months before a horse is able to do so. So that's something I want to uh, notice. So this, this is not only for competition riders, but especially also for amateur riders. Prepare your horse well also for outdoor riding. And if you have questions, you can go to Moxie Sport or from 2022 is Equine Integration for Equine Intelligence. So I want to thank you for your attention and goodbye.